Hi guys, so this is going to be a roundup video of everything I've achieved with the Commodore 64 and with the Arduino so far. Now, I'd like to just run over a few of the things I didn't cover in the last video. If you haven't watched the last video yet, you won't really get what I'm talking about here, so just head on over to my channel and you can watch it there. Um, in fact, I'll put a link in the description so you can click on that straight away if you want to. Now, so far, we've been able to kick out characters across the Commodore 64 user port using RS-232, RS-232C, which is the Commodore standard, and uh, put it into the Arduino and uh, use software serial library to, uh, to pick up those characters and then use them in an Arduino sketch. Now the idea behind it all was to tweak from the Commodore 64. Um, it's been a bit more difficult than I imagined actually. Um, I'd already used the Arduino to tweak before um, when I was playing with the Batsock shield. Um, but this time it's a bit different because the characters coming out the Commodore 64 are a little strange. In fact, they're all uppercase. I think I could have changed that in the Commodore, but I'm not entirely sure how they work. Because it uses PET ASCII, which is a different form of ASCII code. So I just had to deal with it and go with the, uh, the uppercase letters and change them later on. Now, in the previous video you'll have seen that uh, I can tweak from the Commodore 64 already but I didn't explain how exactly I've done that. Now, to do that, you need to use uh, single user OAuth, um, which I don't know what the O stands for. Uh, it's authentication though, whatever it is. Um, but single user OAuth means I can just use the consumer secret and some kind of consumer key or secret key or something like that. I'll, I'll put a, a link in the description so that you can see what I'm talking about. I'm getting a bit muddled. So single user OAuth, means that uh, one person can use their Twitter account by whatever application you've got. Now that's always the same user because Twitter introduced a different kind of authentication with its API so that you can't authenticate using a URL. Um, now that's a bit annoying for people using projects in embedded devices like the Arduino or things connecting onto the Commodore 64. I'm looking down at the Arduino by the way, that's why I keep doing that. Um, but it's a good thing for security, uh, but it does mean when you're trying to authenticate, you get dialog boxes pop up on the internet and you have to put your password in and you have to put your username in as well. Now that you can't do on the Commodore 64, we're dealing with a very old machine, so we have to use single user OAuth or we have to crawl the web in some way, give PHP all the details and let it do all the, uh, the crawling of the web page and putting in bits and the username and password. But I don't know how to do that. I know it can be done, but because Twitter could just change its, uh, its interface entirely, anytime they like, you can't guarantee that's going to work. Now, everything I've learned about the Commodore 64 has either been from this user manual that came with my Commodore 64, or it's been from something called the Interfacing Blue Book, which I'll put a link to the PDF in the description. Um, I also used uh, Lemon64 forums. They're really, really useful. There's some great guys there. And uh, I also looked at uh, an RS-232 circuit that I, I used in this, and I'll put a link to that as well. Now, OAuth is probably familiar to some of you, but if it isn't, go to the Twitter API developer thing, uh, and you can look up single user OAuth. There are loads of examples there for many different languages and environments. I used the PHP one by uh, Abraham, and I'll put a link in the description to that so you can have a look. Uh, and it's really, really simple. All you need to do is set up your application with your Twitter account, and then you can get your consumer secret and the key as well, and you plug those into your PHP. Now, you have to be careful about what you're doing with this PHP file. In fact, I accidentally released my consumer key and secret onto the internet doing one of these tutorials. So uh, you do have to be very careful because it means anyone could tweet from your account or do almost anything from your account, provided you've put the right permissions in place in your, your application. Now I've got read and write uh, permissions on my application so that I can read the tweets coming in or whatever's on my timeline and I can post updates to Twitter. It's a pretty simple process and you can call it just from a single URL which is what I'm doing with the Arduino. So I'm using the Ethernet shield just to contact the internet and send a variable in the URL to update my Twitter. Now I haven't implemented any kind of callback or anything like that to know whether it's actually done. I'm just I'm just sort of assuming it works. And it does work and I've tested it, but 
there's no feedback from the Arduino to the Commodore to say that it's been completed. Now you could do this by reading the tweet it's coming, coming back from the timeline to make sure that it's been sent and sending a character back to the 64, but I haven't been able to talk to the 64 successfully. Uh, reading characters from the, uh, the serial on the, on the Arduino to the Commodore has become a bit problematic. I don't know how to do it. It hasn't worked and in fact I'm just getting a load of weird characters. Now it could be a timing issue, it could be that I'm sending it characters it doesn't understand because it's dealing with Petaski, or it could be that I'm, I just have a bit of a problem with uh, voltages going into the Commodore 64. It might be that the Arduino deals with lower voltages better than the Commodore 64 does. We've seen the Commodore program, Tweet 64 that I made, it's already been done before, plenty of times. Loads of people have already tweeted from the Commodore 64. There's something called Breadbox 64. Um, a guy a long time ago did something with the VIC-20. It was called Tweetver. There are various modem uh, attachment things you can get for your Commodore 64 that either plug into the user port or to the expansion port, the cartridge port thing. Uh, and they work really well. And they're, they're a lot better than the setup I've got. But I wanted something quick and dirty and, and had a little wires coming out and looking cool. So anyway, that's where we are at the moment. We can tweet from the 64 successfully. PHP deals with all the uppercase characters and it changes any of the symbols that are in there so that it can be sent across the URL and then they're, they're changed back via the PHP. So uh, the other we know will change any at symbols, hash symbols and spaces in the message into a URL encoded string so that we can send it out. The PHP changes all that and then it updates Twitter. But where do we go next? What happens now? Well, I would love to be able to get a feed, a Twitter feed coming onto the Commodore 64. That would be brilliant if I could read my tweets from there. Maybe select them and reply. That would be pretty awesome. Um, it wouldn't be that difficult to do, but it would take time to figure out how to do it. The Commodore 64 is so old now, literally as old as I am, that there are people around today, they might know how to do it, but there, there was nothing recorded on the internet at the time to do it, so there aren't many resources available, and it's difficult to get started, so people don't mess around with the Commodore 64 that much anymore. Now, Arduino is a different matter, so that side of it's relatively easy, uh, but the Commodore 64 is pretty difficult. I may update it a little bit, but I've achieved what I wanted to, so I'm quite happy about that. Um, I'm going to show you some of the code. Uh, so that you can see where it is all now. So you'll have a look at the PHP and uh, I'll talk through a bit more of the program on the Commodore side. But I think that's pretty much it, that's over. And uh, it means I can move on to other projects. Right, so here's the code again. It's pretty similar to the code you saw before. Um, it's got the ethernet stuff in here, it's got software serial, and it's got all the variables you need to set up for the ethernet library. Now you can find out about the Ethernet library just from the examples in Twitter once you've got the library installed. I think actually it comes installed in Arduino 1.0 now anyway. Um, it's just the web client example. Um, I haven't changed much of it if I'm honest. Um, it's still pretty similar and all you're doing is getting a URL and sending a variable to it. So if we just go down here, all of this is roughly the same from, uh, from the last video, so if you go and check that out, I've also included the code there so you can have a look. Um, so we're just doing all the normal stuff to get the 64 code here. Now there's a, a little section here about getting tweets, but I decided not to use that in the end because I wasn't able to kick characters into the Commodore 64 very successfully. Um, so if we just go down to the bottom here, here is where we're, uh, we're changing the characters that are coming through. So if there's a space, we're going to add a plus. If there's a hashtag, we're going to add a tilde. And if there's an at symbol, we're going to add a star. And this is just so that when it goes into the PHP, I can change those back because these aren't really very URL friendly. But uh, it calls the send get function here and it changes started to false. And that's just a bit of program flow there. So send get is the function here that we're using. So um, I'm looking at the input string again, just in case it didn't get called before. Um, and also connecting to the server here and sending it across as a variable in the URL. So it's the input string. And this is where you'll need to put your URL here. 
and that's essentially it. And it comes down here, and once it's all it's done everything, it'll print the tweet out to the serial line so that we can see what's going on. So I'm just going to open up the serial monitor so we can see that happening. Now when I do, it will connect, it will reset the Arduino, and it will just be looking for its. Uh, in fact, let's scroll up to the top so I can show you. It will reset the Arduino and perform the setup action once again. So it will look to get the IP address and connect the Ethernet with its MAC address or the MAC and IP. So if I just start that now. So there we go, it's got my IP address automatically. I'm just going to go over to the Commodore and I will send a tweet so that you can see what comes out on the serial monitor. So you can see that the, uh, the tweets come through and it's been encoded for the URL. So I'm a massive nerd, uh, exclamation mark, and then space, and then a tilde, which is the hashtag Arduino. Now it says sent, so let's bring up Twitter. So you can see in Twitter, it says, I'm a massive nerd, hashtag Arduino. So that's what it's brought up. Now let's have a look at the PHP code. So here's the PHP code for the update file. Now this is using the Abraham library, and I'm also using remove shouting, which is a function someone created um, to change the uh, string that you send uh, to lowercase and then to capitalize the first letter. So I found this at this URL here. So what happens here, we get the, the variable that we're sending in the URL. So we're getting update, which is what we called the variable. And then we're gonna replace the characters, the tilde and the star with the appropriate characters we changed back before. And down here, we're just connecting using uh, the Abraham, Abraham's library for connecting to Twitter, I guess. And you need to put your OAuth token and the, uh, the token secret here. Um, I've taken mine out so you can't see that. I wouldn't want that getting free on the internet again. And that's essentially it. That's all it does. They're really, really simple. Um, in fact, you can have a look at the library here. So it's Abraham forward slash Twitter OAuth. And this is pretty much exactly the same file. There are only a few changes. Um, the changes here, if new post, connection, post, blah, 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 and then it adds the new post. So new post is this variable here, and I'm just running uh, remove shouting on my variable that I brought in. So if new post exists, then it will send something. Well, I guess that's it, guys. So thank you very much for watching and for commenting and for just helping me out. If you're, if you're any one of the guys that are on the forum, you've been really, really helpful. And I've really enjoyed this project, but I'm gonna move on to something else now. Um, but I hope I'll come back to the Commodore 64 and do something else at some point.